Well, you should differentiate because one interprets correctly and the other one doesn't. How would you translate uh, uh, the word prophetic in, uh, let's say, modern terms? In modern terms would be the gradual evolution towards in naming and an understanding of scapegoat phenomenon and its importance for the foundation and the perpetuation of community. Mm -hmm. In order to have sacrifice, you must know about the mimetic phenomenon, but take it as some sort of uh, unexplainable gift of the God, which you piously repeat without understanding what it means. The, if the God taught us this, it's in order to save us. Therefore, we repeat sacrifice, and indeed it provides a catharsis that keeps the community at peace. Therefore, archaic religion is true, as well as Christianity. Mm. It's true in a, in a much more limited range, but its efficacy is real. It is true in all respect, whichever way you look at it. Yes. Where it looks more, most false yes. yeah, to modern man, sure. yeah. who does not understand what mythology is. Yes. How, is how important is in your account the fact, um, the, the historicity of, of the Gospel? It is, it is uh, very important. It is absolutely essential. Because it's not only, it's an incarnation of the truth. You almost have to use the terms of uh, theology in order to state uh, what it really is. It is an incarnation of the truth in order to teach people this truth. Mm. To uh, be a disciple of Christ or to listen to the disciples is to understand that the situation which is described and interpreted is the correct interpretation of everything that is misinterpreted in mythology. Mm -hmm. Because uh, to be in mythology is to be the victim of the phenomenon mm -hmm. which uh, a reader of the Gospels that accepts what is said, that regards them as true, mm -hmm. will understand. It is amazing in a way that a, the connection has not been seriously made between the two. In other words, in a different vocabulary, I think what is striking in the mimetic theory should prevent people from dismissing it as they usually do, is that it fits completely, in some respects, the relationship that we become aware of uh, scientifically in the modern world between mythology and the Gospels. Mm. But of course the people who use the, uh, the anti-Christian people would not recognize the fact that uh, we, we are dealing with a, in, in one instance in a correctly interpreted man. So if we understand mythology, if we interpret it correctly, and I think that the Vedic theory does, of course, we can say, literally, scientifically, that it's thanks to the Gospels. Mm. And that's enormously important. Mm. Fraser is very powerful in the sense that he's the first one to use the word scapegoat in its modern sense. Mm. You know, the word scapegoat, everybody talks about it, but doesn't realize that in chapter 16 of Leviticus, the modern meaning is not there. Mm. A victim accused falsely mm. by an entire community, it's not there. Mm. When does it appear? If you take the Litre, the, which is a French dictionary, most authority, it is uh, the historian Saint-Simon, who is uh, writing in 1820 or something, uh, writes a sentence which is, uh, maybe we already told you that. <coughs> Madame so-and-so is a scapegoat of her own salon, oh. which is a marvelous sentence. You see what I mean? And 
apparently that's the first use found of the modern meaning because she's scapegoated by them but they don't know it and she doesn't know it anyway it's a it's a social phenomenon it's a pure social phenomenon that in french it would be the first example mm. yeah. and uh, in english i don't know i have i looked at it but uh, i don't remember there is no such thing that's that's striking Mm. But it's about the same time. Mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a purely Western phenomenon. Mm. And was, because that was clearly marked by the Japanese scholar, uh, what's his name? I, Yamaguchi? Yamaguchi. That you cannot say scapegoat in Japanese. You, yeah, have to, you use the English word. Yeah. Mm. And. Uh, it's not, it wouldn't be true to say that <coughs> no one in Japan understands what a scapegoat is. Now they do, of course. But the first real understanding that comes spontaneously is a Western phenomenon. Mm. And is in the 18th, early 19th century, which is quite late. You know. So how do you interpret that? that? In a way, you have to wait for modernity, actually. That uh, in it's Christianity. To but that, that there are forms of understanding that are subconscious, unconscious, whatever you, word you want to use. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you can say Madame So-and-so is a scapegoat of a salon, in the 16th century they would not have understood what was meant by that. Or they, or they would, it might have enlightened them. Too. So implicitly you are saying that uh, modernity is... Uh, is a superior. Yes, in, the, in Christian knowledge. terms. It's, it's not, you know, a purely scholarly phenomenon. Everybody knows what a scapegoat is mm. today in those terms. Mm. Mm. So, you know, Fraser is the first one who understands psychologically that primitive cultures have scapegoat phenomena in that modern sense. Mm. But mm. he does not apply it to himself. No. And he's absolutely sure it's an exclusively archaic phenomenon. In yeah. other words, there are no scapegoats <coughs> in England in the 19th oh, no. century. Oh, no. uh -huh. although, yeah. although there was the... He does not say so explicitly, but it's obvious from his reason. Although there was the Dreyfus affair. affair Dreyfus. Yeah, well, you know. that's why I say the Dreyfus case is an enormously important thing. Because that the whole country, the judicial system, would be acknowledged as wrong is really the most spectacular acknowledgement of scapegoat, you know. And that it would be a Jew yeah. by Christians. Yes. It's just it, it's a it's a, a it's a paradigmatic psychodrama exactly. of a whole uh, yeah. nation but which encapsulates and the I phenomenon. think one should write something on that subject. And that's probably the, uh, something still to be done. On the fact that the intensity of the fight, you know. Yes, the, the Dreyfus case is uh, one uh, spectacular focus of awareness as you see. Uh, sure. of, of this phenomenon. Because you have the, the whole authority of a state yes. confirmed, reconfirmed, and so forth, and a bunch of people who keep fighting. Who keep so, fighting, who were outside sure. that. And Common they persuasion. were very conscious. They didn't use the word scapegoat, but they were very conscious of what they were doing. Yes, yes. Was unique. And, and when people say, of course, this is an archaic phenomenon, um, uh, it's very possible to turn around and say, well, what was the gravest event of the 20th century? It was the Holocaust. What was the Holocaust except the scapegoating of an entire people, which was and in a sense... And which people, you know? Yeah, and yeah. which people, precisely, and Everybody. with which background uh, which, in national yeah, sure. tradition and... So it's a religious, religious significance, it's just so enormous. As well. you know. um, yeah. Sure. So, um, the notion that um, we're beyond scapegoating is... Um,